بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي سره لي صدري ويسر لي أمري ولقد أتم لساني فقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Ladies and gentlemen First, let me introduce Patani Darussalam to you The forgotten and neglected conflict Patani is a historical region on the southern part of the Malay Peninsula It includes the southern Thai province of Patani, Yala and Naratiwat there are more than 3 million Muslims in the three provinces and districts. Contemporary, Muslim Ummah is facing countless conflicts and confrontation worldwide, both from internal and external factors. One of those is the political conflict resulting from occupation of Muslim lands and people by the non-Muslims. The conflict of Palestine, Kashmir, Mindanao, Rohingya and others are classic examples. The Malay world, the Nusantara, is no exception. While many Malay Muslim nations in the region have attained independence, example Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, there is one region of people who are yet uh, to be liberated from foreign domination, that is Patani, Southern Thailand. Let me share with you the historical background of Patani. The Malay Sultanate of Tani was established in the 14th century, being the continuation of an old ancient kingdom of Lankasuka on the Malay Peninsula. At its height, during the rules of the queens in the 16th to 17th century, Patani became one of the main commercial hub, diplomatic interchange, and the center of Islam propagation in the Nusantara after the downfall of Malacca in 1511 to the Christian Portugal. By 18th century, its northern neighbor, Siam, frequently attacked Patani. In 1786 AD, finally, Patani fell and was conquered by Siam, now known as Thailand. After gradual transition in, the, in 1909, Patani was fully incorporated and part of the state by the Anglo-Siam Treaty, whereby the northern Malay states of the Malay Peninsula were divided. The states of Kedah, Perlis, Kelantan, and Terengganu were given to British Malay, later attained independence in 1957. While Patani, Yala Naritiwat, and Satun were taken by Siam and until today remain under the occupation. The fate of the Malay Muslims on both sides of the nation Thailand border are different altogether. In spite of close proximity and historical relationship, the fate of occupied people of Patani is somewhat forgotten. Malaysians know more about Gaza, Syria, Rohingya and Kashmir more than what they understand and feel about Patani. With the downfall of Patani over two centuries, the people have suffered and deprived of the following. One, no political rights in terms of self-determination to decide what is good and beneficial for them. They are subjected to discrimination and suppression. Number two, the Malay language and culture are being systemically and redacted by assimilation policies. The standard of education is far lagging behind. Thailand ranks eighth in the ASEAN region, while Patani, Southern Thailand, is at the bottom of the entire country. The system of education does not cater to the need of the Malay Muslims. Number four, there is not much development and the economic status of the Malay Muslims are substandard due to negligence and discrimination giving to the unemployment and poverty. Social problems such as narcotic abuses, sex, street, prostitution, alcoholism, etc. are rampant introduced by the security forces stationed in the communities. Islam is a religion of the majority population is at stake. The local religion bodies has no enforcement power to regulate Islamic affairs of the community. Other than obligatory rituals, the remaining Islamic principles are not applicable. The struggle to revive Patani as an independent Islamic state started as soon as it was occupied by Siam in 1786 AD. Initial uprising were led by the Malay rulers. Later on, the general population were involved, including politicians, community, and religious leaders. Many perished in the fight, while some of them took refuge in neighboring countries, the Middle East and Europe, to continue the struggle. After the Second World War, the struggle took another turn. The then suppressive Thai government failed to address the problem through peaceful diplomatic means. Many Muslim leaders were killed, arrested, or made disappear. This 
gave rise to the formation of a liberation movement that staged armed struggle against authorities until this day. The latest surge of unrest started in 2004 and has resulted in more than 6,000 deaths, thousands of casualties and injuries from armed clashes, bombings and shootings. The formal peace talk between the government of Thailand and the liberation movement started on 28 February 2013 with the signing of the general consensus on peace dialogue process with Malaysia as the facilitator. The much expected peace process, widely propagandized and debated in public, was however short-lived. It ended just after a few months of secret talks that brought the discussion to nowhere. After the military coup in May 2014, the talk resumed a few months later, this time around with a wider participation of more armed groups that form an umbrella organization known as Majlis Shura Patani. Patani Consultative Council, or we called it the Mara Patani. The progress is however slow and process fragile. Both sides are struggling at its and this confident building stage and still could not come to agree on the terms of reference or the TOR, a set of rules and regulation as a framework of the dialogue. Apparently, trust is lacking on both sides. While there are talks on the table, on the ground, the fighting continues. Despite the ongoing peace dialogue, nothing much has changed in terms of attitude and policies of the Thai government towards the Malay Muslim. The junta still adopts harsh military approach rather than a political one to solve the problems. The people are subjected to three draconian laws. Firstly, the martial law, the, secondary, uh, the emergency decree and the security act. The idea of sharing the story of Patani will give you the inner picture how violence has affected the lifehood of local Muslim populations and the women in particular have to suffer a great deal from the turbulence, injustice and various kinds of structure. Sorry. Structural violence, including other violence. I will leave the topic about challenge faced by the Malay Muslim women in southern Thailand to my friend here, Anchana, who will share with you the current situation. With that, I end my session with strong hope that you will remember Patani in your doa. Uh, I also end it with Wabillahi Taufiq Wal Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.